let's get into it coach Colin here we got Donald Trump sitting down for one of his more statesmanly like interviews now he's sitting down on a podcast with a bunch of people well I should say a bunch four guys who one is definitely a Trump supporter one has become a Trump supporter after being you know a never Trumper undecided and then there's another gentleman who's still undecided but he's still more on the side of not being for Trump. And the other guy just seems like he's a supporter, but he wants to hear more. So there, there are a bunch of guys who have different opinions on Trump, but they're sitting down with him, having this conversation, podcast format. And in this episode, I'm gonna show you what they're saying about the border. So they're asking Trump about the border, everything behind that, his previous administration when he was doing things there and what he plans on doing. And then there's some breaking news of what he plans to do in regards to immigrants, not illegals, because he's been very clear that he's not catering to illegal immigrants, but legal immigrants. He has a very special surprise that he has not announced on the campaign trail whatsoever. This is the first time that he's saying this. So let's jump right in. I'm gonna show you two clips going to do a little bit of explaining and I'm also going to show you a clip of Poland talking about how they handle illegal immigration. Let's get into it. I do this. People are not going to like it, but I have to do it because it's right. People loved it. The public understood it. They loved it. And now they've gone back into the Paris Accord at the same terms and even worse than the terms I got out. It's really a shame. It's so many things. It's so sad to see so many things. I, I mean, the WHO, the Paris Accord, you take a look at these things, they could have gone back, if they wanted to go back, if they had it, they could have gone back for a fraction of what they were doing. And they're very unfair to the United States. We're like a lapdog for every other country. Mr. President, I, I know you're running out of time here, so but I, we haven't had a chance to, for you to speak to the border situation yet. So I want to give you a chance to, to address that because that's always been really one of the, your main issues since always since 2016. You wanted to build a wall. The Democrats did everything they could to thwart that. You built the, the wall, but then Biden left a bunch of holes in it and then sold off the parts for scrap metal. And yeah. now we've had the problem and repealed your executive orders. So I want to give you a chance to speak to that. Just, but one piece I want to just add in uh, as a follow up question is a lot of tech CEOs say uh, if we fix the border, can we get more H 1Bs for tech workers? So can you address that as well as what's going on at the border? Yes, so uh, we built hundreds of miles of wall, David, as you know, and uh, we're very proud of it. We did it as per specification by the Border Patrol. They wanted exactly the wall that we did with the climb paddle on top, with steel, concrete, and then rebar, and all of the things that they wanted. They wanted to have vision through it, clearly through it. And because I thought about concrete plank, frankly, going up 40 or 50 feet, and they, they didn't like that. They wanted to have vision through, and I understood that too. Uh, I sort of disagreed with it, but that's okay. We actually brought climbers in, Mount Everest climbers to climb, and, and we built a very hard wall to climb. It's, it's a very effective wall. Uh, and we built uh, hundreds of miles, and then we were gonna add quite a bit at the very end. And we, we bought about 200 additional miles, and it was ready to be put up. Could have been put up in three weeks, maybe four weeks, and areas that were rough areas that were people coming in, because as you build the wall, they go in different areas, right? They go further out. Uh, the, it was so effective. It was so effective. Mexico gave us a lot of troops for free because of a certain negotiation that I had with them. You heard that. But it was so effective, the wall. But Biden, they didn't want to put up those slats that were going up routinely by us. That means you had gaps. You had, as an example, you had gates in certain area that we put up, we were going to put up big, powerful gates that we could open and uh, you could let equipment through, et cetera, et cetera, if you needed it. And they got rid of everything. They sold it for five cents on the dollar, much of it, five cents on the dollar. I said, I can't believe it. And that's the first time that I said, they're serious. They actually want open borders. They want an open border. Nobody could believe it. I couldn't believe it because I never believed they wanted an open border because who would be stupid enough to want an open border? Look what's happened with an open border. I was very proud of that. We built, we had the safest border in the history of our country. And now we have the worst border in the history of the world. We had a safe border. I had a remain in Mexico policy, uh, catch and release in Mexico, not in the United States. Everything was so good. 
But the remain in Mexico was a big deal. Not easy to get, but it was a big deal. They were in Tijuana, hundreds of thousands of people. They had to be approved to come into our country. And now you look at what's happened. We've been overrun. It's an invasion of our country by people. Many people come out of jails and prisons. They come out of mental institutions, insane asylums. And we have terrorists coming into our country at a level that we've never seen before. It's a very sad. I never understood why the wall was so controversial. You know, every country needs to have a border and a wall is a really good way to enforce a border. I never understood why they were so animated about stopping you from building the wall after you ran on that issue in 2016. They held you up for years with litigation. And then, like you said, they wouldn't just finish the little pieces of it and they left big holes in it. And I think you're right. The only conclusion is they want an open border. I mean, how else do you explain that? They want to destroy our country. You know, the fact is, it's it's incredible. The big mistake I made, I should have said, I will not build a wall. We do not want a wall. And that wall would have gone <laughs> up in 15 minutes. The more <laughs> This guy right here that's on the screen, and he's so right about that. If he just said the opposite, if he if he just went on record right now, he said, we need to send five hundred billion dollars to Ukraine. All the Democrats would be like, cut it off, shut it down <laughs> right away. But uh, this gentleman right here, he is the most undecided on Trump. He's had negative things to say about Trump in the past, not like a tax or anything, but he just didn't like Donald Trump, didn't like him as president. But after being under Biden, he's starting to really come around and you, you guys didn't get to see it. But as Trump was talking about the border and it was all of them on the screen, there's just so many guys there. Uh, he actually gives a thumbs up that he was actually agreeing with what Trump was saying. Now, uh, just to move on quickly, I'm going to show you another clip of these guys talking. He's actually going to finish what he's saying. Trump's going to drop the big news. The H-1Bs. H-1Bs are just a non-immigrant work visa that allows U.S. employers to temporarily employ foreign workers in speciality um, occupations. It is known as an H-1B special occupations visa or person in speciality occupation visa. Now, some people might disagree with that. You have to understand Anybody who's getting this visa is coming legally. So it's not in the same realm. You know, there's a lot of talk about replacement, replacement of a population. People in Chicago can see that that's happening to them right now. They've voiced their concerns about in town halls, online. They've, they've, they've been very vocal about it, and they've decided that they're all switching over to Trump. There's a red wave coming in Chicago. It's beautiful to see. But this is not the same thing. Right. The people who are coming over on this visa, they're not the same people who are going to be, you know, part of schools getting ta emptied out and taken over as shelters, hotels, businesses, things of that nature. These people have special talents. They are very intelligent. They are working in the tech industry. So it's a li it's a little different. And still, people may still not agree with that because it's like, well, I'm sure you can find someone who's American who can do whatever position this American employer is looking for. And I understand that 100%. Just wanted to tell you guys what H1B was because I didn't know myself. Here's a quick clip. They're talking about a border, uh, how great a wall is. Poland 100% agrees. I've, made, I've played this gentleman before on the channel. I think he is so amazing the way that he talks about this whole issue. And he is so, unap he's unapologetic. It's just amazing. Listen to this. Even if they're seeking asylum. My next guest, a Polish member of the European Parliament, is going viral for what he said this week about illegal immigration. And the Biden administration, they should take note. The lowest unemployment in European Union is Poland. The highest GDP after COVID in European Union is Poland. One of the lowest debts in European Union is Poland. So don't give us this rubbish about the need of educated immigration. We don't need your doctors. We don't need your engineers. Take them, take them all and pay for them. We don't need them. You know why? Because there is a zero terrorist attacks in Poland. Why? Because, because there is no illegal migration in Poland. So don't give me this look 
Don't give me these arguments about the populism, because this is a fact. This is your data. Joining me now is Dominik Tarczynski, who is a Polish member of the European Parliament. You just saw in that video. Dominik, it's great to see you tonight. Now, Thank you very the much EU decided the, the EU decided that this refugee um, welcoming was very important and a positive development for Europe, all of Europe. And they look down on people like you and Poland in general for its decision to say, no, we have to support and protect our culture, which does not include, you know, the Wahhabist Islamic uh, outlook and Wahhabist policies and traditions. And you say? We don't care. Well, there's a difference between a refugee and a migrant, especially illegal migrant. As a lawyer, I'm trying to repeat it every single time for years now. They are not refugees. They are criminals. Those who are trying to cross the border illegally are criminals. And as a criminal should be deported, and there is no discussion about it. Our policy is very straight. Zero, not even one, never ever will come to Poland if it's illegal. If he's trying to cross our border illegally, he will be punished and deported, not uh, welcomed as, as we heard. We're not gonna pay for them. We're not gonna uh, fit them in a beautiful rooms, in the hotels or anywhere else. They will not stay on Polish soil. They will not stay in Poland. Poland, as I said in the parliament, and I'm trying to repeat it, Poland is the only country in the European Union without any terror attack. We haven't had any terror attacks in Poland because there is no illegal migration. That's why every single time I'm trying to say, be like Poland, be brave, believe in your own nations. But most of these spineless politicians in here, in Brussels, are destroying their own countries. I must say, uh, Mr. Trump was right about the wall. He built a beautiful wall. Can you imagine America now without a wall? Poland built a wall. We have a great wall and no one is able to enter. No one is able to come to Poland. And as we promised, our government promised in 2015, not even one will come to Poland ever. Well, Dominic, Dominic, you will continue to support allowing Ukrainian um, refugees, genuine refugees, into Poland during this war, correct? Well, you have to remember that our situation is completely different than, than America, than Americans. Um, we are neighboring country with Ukraine, and by the international law, those who came to Poland, over two million, mainly women and, and children, are honest, uh, genuine refugees. But our law was changed for some time to support them, support them uh, financially, support them with education, with the health care, and all they need to, to live in Poland. But for, uh, for many reasons, recently Mr. Zelensky seems very ungrateful, I must say, and our law might be changed. We don't have to uh, support them with all these benefits, uh, like financial support, we don't have to do it. We wanted, we wanted to do it. We, we decided to do it, well, but we don't have to do it anymore. And I think our contracts, while ended, yeah. will not be extended. What a G this guy is. <laughs> You're going to keep doing it for Ukraine, right? I don't know. Zelensky just seems ungrateful. I mean, we're doing it, but, you know, maybe we don't do it anymore. I don't know. We, we could use the money. Very, very interesting stuff. But I only show that to show this guy, Dominique, his name is. It's almost like Poland has Trump's vision completely realized. Now, their border is not nearly as big. The border wall that he's talking about, I believe it neighbors Belarus. Let me just check on that. Belarus, and it's about 120 miles long. So that's what they achieved. They decided that that's what they're going to do. They don't want anybody coming through. You can't even squeeze through it. I've seen video, you know, I don't know how YouTube will deem that video, but I've seen people, they're trying to squeeze through. They can't even get their heads through. And uh, that's how they keep it. They don't want anybody getting through. So it's it's very interesting. Like what you just heard from that gentleman was someone who saw through everything. And I guess the nation as a whole sees through everything, right? You know, he's saying they're not refugees. They're not really asylum seekers. He's calling them what they actually are. And he's not letting any of them in. 
illegally because he understands. And, and let's just go through what can happen at the southern border. I've covered this at length. You can walk up with a whatever passport, Russian passport. You can throw it away. You can take whatever Russian currency, Mexican currency, Venezuela, whatever you got, throw it away. And you can say you are whoever you want. And then you enter the country and you get to stay four years because Biden did away with remain in Mexico. Whereas before, under Trump, you would have to stay in Mexico. You would have to actually get approved. And if you weren't approved, you get deported back to wherever you said you were from. So it just, I don't know, man, makes a lot of sense. He handled himself very well. He's been saying that this guy, Dominic uh, Tar Tarchinsky, I believe his name is pronounced. He's been saying this for a long time. He's been interviewed by Tucker Carlson, and he's just so unapologetic. And it's just, I, I wish I could see that from Biden or anybody in the government right now. I mean... <laughs> Trump is the only one who's been that unapologetic. He just doesn't want these people to come through. And Dominique, the gentleman you just saw, he's taken the slings and arrows. He's done the interviews. He's been pressed by people. He's been slandered. And he still just stands strong. He's just like, I don't care. Whatever. So it's just interesting to see. Now, let's get back to Trump. Trump is actually about to announce something he has not announced before on the campaign trail. Check this out. The more important point. I think, Mr. President, is we need high skilled workers in this country. Yes. We need to recruit the best and brightest from the world. Every time we get somebody super intelligent from India or Europe, any country, that's three of us one are immigrants, less, sir. Yeah. And three of the four here are immigrants, um, the ones without the ties. And we can get these <laughs> great people into our country. And that's a loss for our adversaries and our competitors. And it's a gain for us. But I've never heard you talk about this. Can you? Please promise us you will give us more ability to import the best and brightest around the world to America. I do promise, but I happen to agree. That's why I promise. Otherwise, I wouldn't promise. Let me just tell you that it's so sad when we lose people from Harvard, MIT, from the greatest schools and lesser schools that are phenomenal schools also. And what I wanted to do, and I would have done this, but then we had to solve the COVID problem because that came in and you know sort of dominated for a little while, as you perhaps know. But what I want to do and what I will do is you graduate from a college. I think you should get automatically as part of your diploma, a green card to be able to stay in this country. And that includes junior oh. colleges too. Anybody graduates from a college, you go in there for two years or four years. If you graduate or you get a doctorate degree from a college, you should be able to stay in this country. And you know more stories than I do, but I know of stories where people graduated from a top college or from a college and they desperately wanted to stay here. They had a plan for a company, a concept, and they can't. They go back to India. They go back to China. They do the same basic company in those places, and they become multi-billionaires employing thousands and thousands of people, and it could have been done here. And a bigger example is you, they, they, you need a pool of people to work for your companies. You have great companies, and they have to be smart people. Not everybody can be uh, less than smart. You need brilliant people. And we force the brilliant people, the people that graduate from college, the people that are number one in their class from the best colleges, you have to be able to recruit these people and keep the people. It was such a big deal. Somebody graduates at the top of the class, they can't even make a deal with the company because they don't think they're going to be able to stay in the country. That is going to end on day one. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Well, I think we that's all fantastic. wholeheartedly agree with that. Being, being, in the, being in the tech industry, we, we understand the importance of that. They're telling us that you have to go to dinner, Mr. President. So thank you so much. So very, very interesting news that he wants to do that if reelected. Now, there's going to be a lot of people who are not going to agree with that. Because again, just like I said before, you know, go find somebody who's American, who has those skills, has those smarts, has those intelligence. There's 380 million people. You can find somebody who's born on the soil. And that's true. But keep in mind, and, you know, some people might not want to do this. You can't throw all immigrants into the same pool. The ones who are students, they're getting their student visa, they're, they're, they're exchange students, things of that nature. They're going through the proper processes. They're really saying who they are. They have, you know, unless you want to be real 
nefarious or real cynical. They have no real nefarious plans. They just want to go to school. They need to get an American education because that diploma around the world works better. And also, they probably want to be able to get a job in America because the money's going to be better and they can bring their family over and things of that nature. They want, they want the American dream. They want that opportunity. It's a little different than people who are deciding that they're just going to walk through the southern border. They're going to walk through Eagle Pass. They're going to walk through California. They're just going to come in. They're not really going to say who they are. They're not going to really, they're going to say they want to get dropped off in New York and then they're going to go to another place and their appointment for asylum isn't for six years. And in that time they do all sorts of stuff and we have no idea though they're that these are two very different sets of people. So for anybody who disagrees with that stance, I understand, but you have to understand these people are completely different. These students are completely different. And there has been a very serious, I don't know if you know the term brain drain. The brain drain is India has a serious brain drain where there are exactly what they're talking about. There are brilliant people in India. They come to school in America and they try to stay as best they can. They want to stay there. It drains out all the most intelligent people from India. America actually has the same thing going on where there is a brain, it's, 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 they call it a reverse brain drain, where these brilliant people come, they benefit from, you know, being in America, learning the culture, going to school, getting the smarts, getting the grades, getting all the education, and then they go back to India. And that's, and it's not just India, it's China, it's India, it's Venice, it's, it's all over the world. Africa, especially Africa, Nigeria in particular, Nigerians are super smart for some reason. Um, <laughs> but that's what's happening and that's how Trump's going to stop that if he's reelected. I think it's a good idea just because here's the thing. It plays to both ends cuz some people will hear this and be like, "Oh, Trump's going soft." He still has the plan of mass deportation. And that is something that people on the right are heavily for. And it's not even just people on the right, working class people who are feeling afraid of getting replaced, who are feeling the strain from so many illegal immigrants coming into their cities and towns, those people really want to see that happen. And it's not just, it's not the good people who are illegal immigrants. It's, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of, like Chicago, people in Chicago have been talking about it at length. There's a lot of crime. There's a lot of misbehaving. There's a lot going on. So they, they are really supporting that. Then, when he does this, this kind of speaks to the left because the left wanted to do this for a long time as well. This is something that Obama talked about doing but never got done. This is something that Biden talked about doing, I think, while he, I think it was just before he became vice president. So this is stuff that has been talked about by Democrats for a long time. So now Trump is doing something that is really in favor of the right. And he's also thinking of what the Democrats wanted to see, and as a whole, just what is good for American companies. I think this is a very good move by Donald Trump, very statesmanly, as so many people have wanted. They're tired of the mean tweets and the nicknames. Well, here you go. This is Trump thinking clearly, providing real solutions. But guys, I gotta get out of here. Like, subscribe, turn on the notifications, helps us tremendously. Other than that, I'm out.